If you are ingesting large amount of data for analysis or looking to simplify the development of event-driven microservices, then you need to check out Cloud PubSub. Welcome to PubSub Made Easy. I am Priyanka, and in today's episode, we will dive deeper into publishers and see some configuration and application design choices you will need to make when building a real-world publisher application. A publisher application creates and sends messages to a desired topic on Cloud PubSub. Cloud PubSub offers at least once message delivery and best effort ordering to existing subscribers. While publishing messages to a topic, when using JSON over REST, the message data must be Base64 encoded. The entire request, including one or many messages, must be smaller than 10 MB after decoding. The message payload must not be empty. It must contain either a non-empty data field or at least one attribute. What can you include in the message itself? Well, here's the message schema. You can embed custom attributes as metadata in the messages. Attributes can be text strings or byte strings. A server-generated ID unique within the topic is returned on the successful publication of a message. If you would like to see an example of publishing a message, check out the previous episode. All client libraries offer an asynchronous API where your application does not have to wait for the actual publish request to be complete although synchronous or blocking mode of operation is supported as well. Check out the link in the description below for the API reference documentation for your choice of programming language and its support. The first decision you have to make is how to batch your messages. You can configure the client library to send multiple messages per request to the service based on the size of the buffer or time the client waits for the buffer to fill. Batching has the obvious advantage. The larger batch size increases message throughput, which is the rate of messages sent per CPU. Asynchronous client libraries try to publish multiple batches in parallel for higher throughput, but it also comes at a cost. It introduces latency for individual messages, which are queued in memory until their corresponding batch is filled and ready to be sent over the network. To minimize latency, batching should be turned off. This is particularly important for applications that publish a single message as part of the request response sequence. However, the additional network and computing overhead may make small batches preferable. You'll have to tune your system. Messages can be batched based on request size in bytes, number of messages, and time. You can overwrite the default settings by defining your own. Here's an example code in Python where we are defining batch settings for maximum bytes, latency, and messages. A caveat here is that once you override one setting, you should override them all explicitly. Now here's how this works. On the first message that you send, a new batch is automatically created with a countdown. For every subsequent message, if there's already a valid batch that is still accepting messages, then that batch is used to drop the new message. The batch is published once sufficient time has elapsed, maximum messages is, has reached, or maximum bytes is met. By default, the batch setting is set to 0.05 seconds. Now, what happens if publishing fails? Publishing failures are automatically retried in some client libraries. Check out the linked documentation to check the support for the language of your choice. Because we are dealing with requests over a network, request failure is a normal part of life and understanding retries is essential. Client libraries support custom retry settings. Here's a snippet with retry error code received from the publisher. Here's a snippet with retry parameters that include timeouts and delays with the default settings. The main two parameters to understand are the total timeout, which is how long the application will keep retrying before giving up, and the initial timeout, which is how soon it will start retrying. The total timeout depends on the typical availability of your network, the memory available to your machines, and application-specific considerations. All right, so today we learned how to publish messages in Cloud PubSub, different options including synchronous, asynchronous messages, and setting up batches and custom attributes. Join us next time to learn more about setting up the subscriber to receive messages. If you liked this video and would like to see more such content, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.